Hello and welcome. It's been a while, but today we are going to be taking a look at making SMP compatible rain detectors because I know that as of 1.3, the particle based arrow detectors that previously were useful for single player rain detectors is now no longer functional as rain detectors. So let's get started, shall we? We'll get to some usage examples for these rain detectors, but first I'm assuming you're going to want to know how to build these in the first place. Now, we're going to be using the concept of snowmen dying in rain, and this does mean that you must build at least a part of your system, the snowman part, in a biome that snowmen can actually survive in. That means you may have to check the wiki to ensure that the biome you want to build in is suitable because it may change from version to version. Now you may be thinking we can simply place a snowman over top of a stone pressure plate preferably, wait till it dies, and then invert its power and do whatever we want with it. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the snowman will not take any damage whatsoever because snowmen only take damage from the lower half of their body. And just like pressure plates prevent water from flowing over them, pressure plates also prevent rain from falling on their block as well. So that means any snowman that is standing on a pressure plate is, as long as they do not jump too high, protected from any damage caused by rain. It's a great way to protect your snowman while giving them a clean line of sight above them. However, it's not particularly good for creating rain detectors. Now next I thought maybe we can simply build the snowman in water, let them die to rain, and then use their snowballs to activate a pressure plate. Unfortunately, snowmen die in water now in newer versions. It wasn't like that in older versions, but now they do. And also, sometimes they don't actually drop snowballs. I've seen it very recently. They just sometimes do not. So, what I thought is maybe what we can do is instead use the advantages that we gained along with the drawbacks by using these tripwire hooks that have come in recent versions as well. Now, unfortunately, while we can, in fact, kill off the snowman this way, because just like water, rain is not blocked by tripwire strings. However, uh, sometimes you'll notice that Snowmen will, in fact, drop snowballs, and when they do that, the snowballs, just like any other entity, be it an arrow, or a snowman, or a player, will actually activate the tripwire hooks. And that's not what we want, because then when the snowman dies, nothing happens, and it's as if no rain occurred at all. So what I have here is sort of a cage built out of fences. Now this is my sort of final design. Someone might make a better design, but this is what I find works. And there may be some issues that I have overlooked, but at the moment it works fine. And inside of this cage of fences, which is two blocks high, we also have a fence in the middle. What this does is it raises up our snowman above the one block that it would otherwise be standing on so that it can actually activate these tripwire hooks. However, it also prevents the snowman's items from falling on the hooks, and uh, or on the string at least, and activating it permanently. So if we were to build a snowman here, it will immediately die off, and it can't jump out at any point, and whenever it dies, the snowballs have absolutely no effect on our tripwire hook. So uh, it's a really great concept, I think, but again, there may be more elegant solutions, smaller, more compact solutions, but that'll be up to you to find out. And next we can actually move on to some example usage cases. And now we're floating up here again. So for our first example, we have a Legend of Zelda style fairy pool. It's basically just a carved out pool that is perfect for water to flow through without actually stopping midways and looking kind of dumb. And uh, in the back we have set up our our snowman cage here that is attached to a binary save here that's holding back a bunch of water sources and then it's also coming out underground down here and around this sort of hollowed out mountainside where it comes up and through a AND gate along with a button right here which whenever pressed while we have the rain detector active will send off a bunch of EXP enchanting bottles from our our dispensers here and they will fire all the way into our pool and even if our player goes all the way out to the end of our pool they won't be able to see it because we've placed the dispensers far enough away whenever you come to normal items doing this it won't actually work because normal items actually won't fly as far as items like snowballs and bottles of enchanting which actually do get projected quite far now then we shall get started with seeing how uh, what we can get here. 
So, uh, a hero is born when the heavens cry. A really cheesy sort of sign that I threw together uh, for this example. And now if we toggle the downfall, our snowman in the back will die. And when, I, when it does die, the pool will fill up with water, presumably from rain. You never know. It's a lot of rain. It's very thick rain. And then if we press our button, we get a whole bunch of EXP in the pool. So it's kind of like getting magic in a Legend of Zelda style um, you know, fairy fountain and that kind of thing. And next we will move on to a very similar example. So we have yet another pool this time, and again it's completely empty, and once the rain starts it will fill with water. But the idea this time is that the rain is sort of building up and forcing some kind of uh, mudslide to happen, and then this sort of dirt breaks out, and then water starts flowing through, and we get fish from the water as if it were coming out from a natural uh, river. A uh, natural waterfall. So in the back we have once again our snowman cage. And you'll notice that of course the bottom part of our cage is actually unnecessary and I have some redstone going around there. It's going into this binary save which is controlling our uh, water our water with pistons here. And this is just leading into a, uh, a lever which I was using originally for testing purposes. And then on the right side here, it's going into just a quick pulse, which is sort of extending. I very much cobbled this all together, so it's not pretty, and it could have been done a lot uh, cheaper, so to say. But then our redstone is coming up here, and then that is going to toggle one dispenser. And when that dispenser fires, it's going to be firing into the back here, where it will land in our water, come down, and then hit up one of these other pressure plates, which I've used the same system that I used in my item uh, counters video, except instead of firing out the same dispenser, I take that and I wrap it around and plug it into a different dispenser, which then fires, hits up that pressure plate, which comes around and plugs into the other dispenser. That way we get a whole bunch of fish spawning at different intervals at different places in the river to make it look a bit more natural. It doesn't work quite the way I would have hoped, however it was again a quick cobbled up mess and it works well enough for an example I think. So, if we come down here, uh, we can take a look at what it looks like. So, the downfall started. Our snowman is presumably dying. There we go. And then the water's flowing. And then if you give it a few moments, the fish will uh, take a little while for it to be registered. But after that, we'll get a bunch of fish spawning in. Here we go. You can see them flowing. And then there we go. We have fish spawning from a otherwise... Um, well, natural looking, but semi-unnatural uh, waterfall coming from a unnatural river. And then if you want to drain out all your fish so that it doesn't look like they are uh, um, just stopping and getting huddled up in a corner and uh, you don't want them to uh, sort of build up, you can use a half slab like so and then sort of put a cactus down below for them to be destroyed on so that it doesn't lag the server constantly when something like this happens whenever you want a constant flow of fish and water down a river or that sort of thing. And uh, I don't think you need to sit here and wait for all of the fish to go to get the idea, so we'll cut it there. I, um, I have actually been working on my own game recently and that's why it's taken so long to get this video out and I've also been procrastinating a lot with uh, making that game so I can also post some videos on that on this channel if you'd like. Um, of course it will incorporate some of my ideals but uh, it won't necessarily be Minecraft related so tell me what you think about me posting some videos of my own game in the comments section and I will see you next time.